Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking about the best self-watering pot ever. And I mean ever. And as the title says, there is no such thing. The best one in the world is the one you customize for yourself. Because honestly, no matter how good a product is, whether it's an affordable pot from Amazon or the Lechuza pot, for many of us, it is never a hundred percent perfect and suited for what we needed to do. And that's absolutely normal. Manufacturers don't know what each of us individually want from our pot. So they're just trying to fulfill what they think the majority of people will enjoy. So today I'm going to share with you some ideas that I have for customization of these pots. These ideas don't necessarily benefit me, but reading your comments along the years, I do know that you guys individually have all sorts of needs. So I'm going to try to give you some ideas, but of course your imagination is limitless. But anyway, I hope these things that I will show you today will help you out. So don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post three times a week. Now, first of all, of course, you can absolutely DIY the entire self-watering pot. I have some ideas. I did some things in the past. I'll link you to the video down below. But as some of you who are older on my channel know, I'm not extremely talented at crafts. I wish I were, but I'm not. So for me, it is actually best to buy something pre-made, at least to some point, and then customize it. And one of the things that I had to change with these pots that I recently purchased is the wick because this is not a super wicking, super easy to wet wick as I discovered. I did my little test with the water in a separate container and a paper napkin. And this wick did not get wet, not even after two days. It does actually get wet if you insist. It's not very even in my opinion. Mind you, I am comparing it with the best thing there is on earth at wicking, which I will show you. So for me, Mm, I've seen better. Furthermore, the manufacturer states on the listing that it has on Amazon that this guy is made out of cotton. Now, cotton is a natural organic fiber and being that it's organic, it is going to break down in time sooner rather than later because it sits in water. Now, even though initially this did not feel like cotton, one of you guys gave me an idea to try and burn it and see what happens. And oh boy, this caught fire. It did not react like plastic. Furthermore, it smelled a little woody. So I am pretty sure it has some natural fibers in. It might be a mixture with something synthetic, but it will break down. So for me, this is a no-no. So if you ever have any reason to doubt the wick your pot ever comes with, I will give you the best material there is in this world to use as a wick. And this is microfiber. I already started to use microfiber as a wick, especially because these types of pots have a pretty wide slit at the bottom. So I could actually fit a wide string. And what this is, is actually a used kitchen rag. Mine doesn't look very bad. It's not all that fluffy anymore, has a few stains, but you can absolutely use whatever old kitchen rag you have rather than tossing it out because it has a hole or I don't know, you don't wanna use it for whatever reason, don't toss it out. Make sure it is properly washed because if it has oils and grease, it will not absorb properly. And then keep it around to use as a wick. I assure you it is the best wick ever, ever because not only does it wick super fast and retains quite a lot of water, but when it dries, it doesn't become water repellent once again. I have had wicks in the past, which, okay, I work a little bit, I get it wet, it does its job, but then as the reservoir depletes and things get dry, this guy gets dry and water repellent again. So when you water the orchid, you will find that the wick simply hovers or floats on top of the water and it actually doesn't wick anything anymore. With microfiber, this will never happen. So first tip, if you're not happy with the wick you have, use microfiber. I assure you it is the best material for wicks. Furthermore, it is synthetic. It will not break down. Make sure you reuse it as much as possible. If you switch plants, wash it with detergent. It washes very, very well. It will last you pretty much forever. Of course, there are other materials you can use as wicks. Some of you might know that I do have the polypropylene string, which I use with some of my pots. This works great as well, but since these particular pots had these slits, and I do believe most of you have microfiber in your homes rather than this material, I think this is a better suited material to present today. Okay, quick intervention. I just realized that the wicks that I have received with these pots 
are not the same. So I got myself the tinier type of pot and the bigger one. And look at this. One is drenched in water, one barely wants to get wet. So I did some experiments. Visually, you can tell that the two wicks are not identical. One of them actually gets wet and wicks pretty great, and the other one barely gets wet. I even dropped it in a separate container and poured water over it, and guess what? It was floating on the surface. But I guess we solved the mystery of why some of you were saying that the wicks actually work okay. Turns out the quality of them is pretty variable. I personally still won't use them because there is a high chance they have natural fibers in. But yeah, just so you know, if you are interested, I do believe the big container comes with the wicking wick and the tiny one comes with whatever this is. It doesn't even want to get properly wet. Do you see how patchy it is? I don't really understand why, but it is what it is. But oh shoot, you didn't know that the wick you're using is not synthetic or is not absorbent. So now you're stuck with a wick that doesn't work or with a wick that disappeared. What do you do? Well, I do have a bit of a solution for you. So, in some cases, you can actually place a wick without having to repot or disturb the orchid. The way to do so is to prepare a little wire, which you will not see, but I will give you a close-up of. A thin floral wire is what you need, which is long enough to travel the diameter of the pot. So, what you will do is attach the wick you want to use to one end, try to make sure it is really stable in this wire, so bend a little bit the wire around it so it doesn't get out, and then try to arrange your wire in a circular shape and just insert it through the drainage holes of your pot and pull it out on the other side. And in this way, you will be able to arrange the wick in the pot without actually disturbing anything. Now, since I actually tilted the pot, I made a very huge mess. All of the top layer is now on the floor, but I only tilted the pot to film. I did actually do two more orchids before this, and all I did was keep the pot slightly above me, and I actually didn't have this mess. So don't worry, it's not as messy as it looks here. Now, obviously, depending on the type of pot you have, you might not be able to feed the entire wick through, case in which all you need to do is use the wire as a sort of needle and just thread it through the pot until you reach the top and then bury it slightly beneath the medium and there you go. You have a wick through the pot, which will work just as great. Now, as you guys know, I'm using self-watering pots because they really, really suit my very warm environment. And besides being warm, it's not very wet from the point of view of rains either. But this doesn't mean that those of you who don't have the type of climate that I have cannot actually benefit from self-watering pots. Your main issue will probably be aeration inside the pot. Not to worry, you can actually place ventilation holes in these pots as well. If you don't have the same design as I do, you can place ventilation holes right here at the top of your reservoir. Obviously, if you place the holes here, then you're defeating the purpose of a reservoir and any water that will be in here will just spill. Depending on what you actually need, you can go ahead and provide extra ventilation, extra drainage, whatever you want to the interior pot and to the exterior pot. So I went ahead and I did some holes in my self-watering interior pot. I used a soldering iron like I always do and it worked absolutely great. I personally don't need this extra ventilation, but it's not going to hurt. What it will do is provide even more aeration inside the medium while providing water at the same time. And this is, I believe, one of the most important things to have right or to understand when you're growing orchids. At least this is my philosophy. This is how I care for all of my orchids. All that you see on my YouTube channel and especially in the past few years is designed, quote unquote, to work on this method air and water at the same time. And of course, you can see the results yourself. Check out the Orchids in Bloom videos. Every month I do them at the end of the month. So if you thought that you cannot actually do this in a self-watering pot, you absolutely can. And this might make the difference between a way too wet pot and a wet enough pot to just make your life a little bit easier with your kids. Speaking 
thinking about drainage, some of you grow your orchids outside. And I know some of you in the Philippines, in Florida, in Mexico, some of you really don't need to bring your orchids inside the house, which is awesome. I have to. But for those of you who always keep your orchids outside and who have more rain than me, self-watering pots can benefit you as well. One of the biggest issues you will have outside with a self-watering pot is no drainage. What do we do if you store so much water in this pot and you have no idea? Of course, the roots will not like it. They will be suffocated. Well, build yourself an overflow. All you need to do is place a hole somewhere on the height of the reservoir. Somewhere where you think, okay, this is enough water. I don't want the level of water to be higher than this, no matter what. Put a hole here or multiple holes. And in this way, no matter how much water or rain falls on top of your pot and on top of your orchid, the reservoir will only maintain a set amount of water. And in this way, you will not have suffocated roots. It works a little bit like the semi-hydroponic setup. And if you remember a few years ago, I did actually customize my own self-watering pots. All I did was place some drainage holes at the side of the pot. It wasn't my original idea, but definitely you can apply the same technique to a self-watering pot that doesn't have an overflow or a drainage hole somewhere further up. Now you might have noticed that these particular self-watering pots have a very big ventilation vent right here. And it turns out this vent is actually super important, especially if you do wanna have this type of an arrangement inside. You need air to be refreshed around the roots. Well, some pots sadly don't have these vents and it's the case with the Lechuza pot. Now again, in my environment, I don't really have much issues because of this. It's rather dry and very hot. But whenever I remove the interior pot and take a look inside, I am welcomed by an unsettling, kind of moldy smell that I don't appreciate, I don't trust. It's not okay to have trapped stale air inside, particularly if you don't have time to just introduce some fresh air from time to time. So in this case, you can actually place some ventilation holes yourselves. Again, using a soldering iron or a heated nail. In the case of the Lechuza, you can place some vents right here at the top, you have space, but if you don't have space, just place them somewhere at the top of the decorative container. I understand that you might grow your orchids in the house and having a hole close to the bottom might be a little scary. You don't want water falling on your furniture. But if you place it above and you are careful not to overfill dramatically the reservoir, then you should be absolutely safe. And whenever you pour water, air will be pushed out from this reservoir through the vents and new air, fresh air will be introduced inside. And this can actually, again, make the difference between healthy roots and not so healthy roots. In some environments, you don't really need these vents. I seem to be okay without them, but I think I'm at the edge as well. But in some environments, definitely this little vent will help out. And speaking about these vents, a few years ago, I remember at least one of you guys told me that the problem with self-watering pots in your environment is mosquitoes and yeah i experienced mosquito larvae quite recently myself as i tried to grow some water lilies outside and well one thing you can do is actually let the reservoir completely dry out but even so i can understand that for the period of time in which you do have water in the reservoir even though the mosquito larvae might not mature you just don't want that thing there accumulating biodegradable stuff, I get it. What you can do is get yourself some mosquito nets and actually cover the vents. So in this case, I can go inside and glue the net on the inside just to make it look a little bit better. I think the easiest way to glue it is using a hot glue gun on the inside of your pot. You can definitely make the net whatever shape suits your pot better and hey presto, your problems with mosquito larvae are over. <laughs> now here's one that might be a little bit obvious, I think, but I'm just gonna tell you about it anyway. You know, there are those self-watering pots that have a transparent outer mask. Yeah, they're great. You can actually see the level inside, but what they're not great at is keeping algae at bay. In time, because of the constant moisture and nutrients you will have in the reservoir, 
algae will definitely form. One way to make sure that they don't appear is to actually paint the outer mask. You can use spray paints designed for plastic or glass or whatever material you might have, but oh no, you're gonna lose the benefit of actually seeing through the pot. Not really. All you need to do is cut a sticker into whatever shape you want. Stick it on your pot just before you paint it. You can use masking tape as well. Paint your pot and when everything is done, just remove it. That portion where the sticker was will not actually have paint, will still be transparent. And even though, yes, it will let a little bit of light get inside, it will not let a whole lot of light inside. So you shouldn't actually have as many issues with algae. The next tip is something that I've already talked about, but I will mention it very briefly here as well, just to have everything in one place. Maybe some of you missed that video. If you have one of these clay pots that at some point gets clogged with salts or soil, or it just doesn't work as well as you want it to work, all you need to do is drill a hole through the bottom, insert a wick, and hey presto, you have a self-watering pot again, which will never clog. Obviously, you can use vinegar or lemon juice or other acids to dissolve the salts, but it will not prevent them from reappearing. If you drill the hole at the bottom though, it will be permanent, but you will have a permanently functional self-watering pot as well, which will look very aesthetically pleasing as well. And before I let you go, a reminder to be sure to use a wicking medium with self-watering pots. If you want to use these pots with bark, I mean, you can, nobody is stopping you from trying out whatever you want to try, but it will not work as efficient as with something like sphagnum moss or cocoa peat or soils or anything that is a lot more wicking. So unless the roots actually touch the wick, you will not actually have anything dragging the water up top. But in the end, don't let me tell you how to use your self-watering pots. As I was saying, your imagination is the limit. These were just some tips that I thought of. As you see, I'm not actually applying all of them because they don't necessarily suit me, but I hope they will help you out or at least open the door to even more ideas and ways in which you can make your life a little bit easier with any type of pot at the end of the day. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will put links down below in the description to where you can find these pots so you can check them out if you want to try them yourself. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!